Sam Altman promised a scientific revolution. What he delivered instead was a masterclass in how quickly momentum can unravel. In the span of just days, OpenAI managed to fumble a major product launch, spark an ethics firestorm over adult content, get publicly embarrassed by mathematicians, and watch Google quietly remind everyone that the race isn't over. Each incident alone would dominate news cycles. Together, they paint a picture of a company sprinting so fast it's tripping over its own shoelaces. This wasn't just bad luck or poor timing. This was a convergence of missteps that exposed deeper tensions about what AI companies are actually building and who they're building it for. GPT-5 arrived in August with enormous expectations. OpenAI had spent months positioning it as a leap forward, not an incremental upgrade. The reality? First reactions were brutal. People expected a moonshot and got what felt like a careful step sideways. Altman later tried to reframe the narrative, claiming the vibes at launch were bad and then flipped once people tried the model in the right contexts. Inside OpenAI, they described GPT-5 as a genuine research assistant, a tireless tutor, a smarter search interface, something that nudges real science forward instead of just summarizing existing knowledge. The problem was the debut itself. The launch stream showed charts with wrong numbers. The live demonstration went wobbly. In the days following, the team quietly patched tone and behavior, so the model sounded warmer and less robotic. But by then, the damage was done. Critics landed on a simpler takeaway. The improvements felt incremental, leaning heavily on better speed and lower cost rather than raw capability gains. Gary Marcus blasted the hype directly, pointing out that OpenAI's two biggest promises, AGI and PhD-level reasoning, simply didn't materialize. Greg Brockman pushed back, arguing the gains weren't just brute force scaling of data and chips, that reinforcement learning from human feedback did more of the heavy lifting than critics acknowledged. Mark Chen added context that most mainstream users never see. In mathematics-heavy settings, the jump is massive. He pointed to a math Olympiad climb from top 200 to top 5, a leap that barely registers for someone just drafting emails or summarizing articles. Altman planted his flag regardless. GPT-6 will be significantly better than 5, he declared. GPT-7 significantly better than 6. That's the rhythm he's selling, a relentless improvement curve that asks users to trust the trajectory even when individual releases disappoint. Then the conversation took a sharp turn away from benchmarks and straight into boundaries. OpenAI announced it would relax content rules for verified adults later this year, allowing sexually explicit text under certain safeguards. That single decision ignited the entire AI ethics community because it collides head-on with the company's public posture on safety and responsibility. Supporters framed it as treating adults like adults, tighter protections for minors, better controls for people with mental health vulnerabilities, but freedom for consenting adults to use the tool however they want. Detractors saw something else entirely, a pivot toward growth and engagement dressed up as user freedom. The company also teased more personalization options. Let ChatGPT act more like a friend if you want, leaning into emojis and a humanish vibe, or keep it formal and distant. The official claim is that none of this constitutes engagement maxing, it's supposedly giving control back to users. Outside the press releases, advocacy groups warned about synthetic intimacy and dependency risks. Even with age gates and mental health guardrails, they argued, the harms aren't hypothetical. They're documented in smaller chatbot platforms. That tension between autonomy and protection now sits squarely at the center of OpenAI's roadmap. European analysts went deeper on practical problems. Even strong safety systems get jailbroken regularly, which means any relaxation demands tougher moderation, faster response pipelines, and genuine resourcing to catch edge cases before they scale. There's also the reality that erotic content definitions and legal status change country by country. Building one global policy that doesn't erase local norms or impose one region's politics on others is extraordinarily difficult. Ethics researchers flagged another issue OpenAI knows well. Models tend to over-agree with users because the training process rewards politeness and compliance. 
In everyday chat, that reads as friendliness. In sexual context, it could reinforce unhealthy beliefs and behaviors. Some commentary pointed to potential upsides. For many women, a controlled text-only space might feel safer than public chat rooms or direct messages. Still, privacy sits like a landmine under all of this. If a dominant platform becomes the place where adults share intimate fantasies, it accumulates the most sensitive data a tech company can possibly hold. That raises the bar on encryption, retention policies, internal access controls, audits, and breach response far above normal product standards. One major leak would be catastrophic not just for individuals but for the entire company's credibility. While policy debates raged, OpenAI also moved to address political bias, or more precisely, the model's habit of mirroring users. A new evaluation used around 500 prompts across 100 topics ranging from neutral to emotionally loaded. The goal wasn't to crown a political side as correct, it was to identify which behaviors trigger drift toward partisan framing. They identified five red flags, the model slipping into its own political voice, escalating a user's emotional tone, framing issues one-sidedly when multiple valid perspectives exist, dismissing a user's viewpoint and dodging questions without clear reason. The finding that raised eyebrows was asymmetry. Under strong liberal prompts, the model deviated more than it did for equally strong conservative ones. OpenAI's fix isn't about turning ChatGPT into a fact checker. It's behavioral training to make it less of an opinionated conversationalist and more of a steady communicator that neither flatters nor fights the user's politics. That's a direct hit on sycophancy, the tendency to agree just to score reward points during training. It also connects back to the content debate because the last thing OpenAI wants is a system that adapts its moral temperature to whoever shouts loudest. On the research front came a reality check the internet desperately needed. One OpenAI manager posted that GPT-5 had found solutions to multiple classic Erdos problems, mathematical challenges named after legendary mathematician Paul Erdos. It read like a field-defining breakthrough, the kind of claim that would validate everything Altman had been saying about AI advancing real science. Mathematicians stepped in immediately. Thomas Bloom, who curates erdosproblems.com, explained that open on his site simply meant he personally didn't know the solution, not that the wider mathematical literature lacked one. GPT-5 had surfaced known results the curator had missed. Useful, but not groundbreaking. Nassim Nicholas Taleb called the episode embarrassing. Jan LeCun mocked the hype openly. The post came down, the wording softened, and the story shrank to its useful core. GPT-5 is strong as a literature scout, not a mathematical innovator. Terence Tao, one of the world's leading mathematicians, has been saying exactly that. AI speeds up searches, cross-references scattered terminology, and trims grunt work. It can still stumble on hard proofs and humans still vet what actually matters. That's not a failure. It's a precise, valuable role, but it's decidedly not the revolution OpenAI implied. Meanwhile, Google did some historical housekeeping in public. At Salesforce's annual event, Mark Benioff asked Sundar Pichai how it felt when a small San Francisco startup stole the spotlight in late 2022. Pichai admitted Google already had a chatbot in development and major AI investments queued up but didn't think the product crossed the quality bar the Google brand demands. The day ChatGPT launched, that calculus changed instantly. Leadership called a code red, pulled teams toward deployable prototypes, and accelerated the path to Gemini. Fast forward to now, and Google is emphasizing scale beyond models, in-house chips, new infrastructure, and a giant AI hub in India that represents their largest AI investment outside the US, built to run mostly on clean energy. Pichai also confirmed that Gemini 3.0 is slated for later this year. It's an open admission that reputational risk delayed their first serious response and a signal that the next move is far bigger than just an app release. Back to OpenAI's roadmap, the adult content plan got clarified again through multiple posts. Altman said the team initially made ChatGPT restrictive to reduce mental health harms that they now believe better tools let them loosen restrictions for verified adults without loosening safeguards for minors or at-risk individuals, and that erotica was just one example of giving adults more control over their experience. 
Critics met those statements with deep skepticism, especially groups that have spent years tracking harms from pornography and exploitation. Their argument is blunt. Even adults get hurt by synthetic intimacy. Industry guidelines remain fuzzy, and verifiable harms have already appeared in smaller chatbot platforms. The subtext is that OpenAI is racing competitors who explicitly say no to this category, which makes the move look commercial first and ethical second. The company denies that framing, pointing to verification systems, opt-ins, and policy carve-outs as proof of restraint. The reality is this will be judged in production, not in press releases. There's one thread tying everything together, reputational load. Every claim and rollout now gets graded on a curve set by the GPT-5 launch. That stream with wrong charts hardened a narrative that the model is fast and cheap, but not fundamentally smarter. In weeks after, developers and researchers found more to appreciate, yet the first impression stuck like concrete. The Erdos incident then amplified the perception that OpenAI's claims lean ahead of facts. On the political bias front, the company is teaching the model to stop being overly agreeable and start being sturdily neutral without sounding robotic. A small-sounding change with enormous stakes in an election-heavy world. And on the GPT-6 content shift, the brand is now on the hook for the hardest category to moderate at internet scale across jurisdictions with adversaries who love probing guardrails. None of this is impossible. All of it is costly. If Altman's prediction holds six far better than five, seven far better than six, then the next cycle has to show that capability leap while avoiding rollout misfires and proving the new policy boundaries don't collapse under their own loopholes. The market will measure that in trust as much as in tokens per second. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.